Well, hello guys and welcome back to Mr. G Physics. This is Mr. G and this time we're going to be solving a question or not solving a question, we're going to be doing a special video related to emission and absorption spectra because one learner asked me to please explain in terms of red shift and blue shift. Don't go if you struggle with the part of the topic, it's little mark but it's important. So subscribe for the channel and I'll be back in a minute. Well, now, this is emission and absorption spectra. Let's speak a little bit. I'm not want, I don't want to make a long video. We're going to be looking at this specific topic. Now, what is the spectrum? That is the, the part and form when a beam of light is broken up into its component frequency or when the beam of light is broken into colors. When light is broken into the different colors, that is what we call spectrum. All right. Now, for example, if light passes through a prism, you know that one from gray 8, then light is broken into different colors you can see in that picture there or even in the previous one. That is what we call spectrum of light. Now, the spectrum of light, by definition, is a distinctive pattern of wavelengths emitted by a source of light. As you can see there, you see the different lights that compose the spectrum, the different colors. All right, if we refer to one color, it's what we say monochromatic light. Monochromatic means one color. So light or a monochromatic light could be blue uh, light, for instance, which remember it have certain wavelengths as well as certain frequency. All right, so now we move on. Now, this one is very important to have in mind when we're speaking about the red shift, which is coming just in a minute, and blue shift you need to remember that the red color which is on one stream of the spectrum look here one stream is the red the red have the longest wavelengths and it's therefore will have the smaller the smallest frequency you need to know that wavelengths and frequency are inversely proportional to each other the Violet side, which is towards the blue, you can see there, is violet, but the blue is to that side. That's why we speak about blue shift. It has the shorter wavelengths and the, therefore the largest or the biggest, biggest frequency. This is important to have in mind when we speak about, um, about the red shift and blue shift. So that is extremely important each light or each color will have its own frequency and will have its own wavelength all right so now spectrum we are going to have two main type of spectrum one of them is called the emission spectra and the other one is called absorption spectra the emission spectra are produced by objects at high temperature for instance the sun that is what they give an emission spectra. That is the rainbow that you can see. That is an example of an emission spectra. When you see a rainbow, that is an emission spectra. When light, and now absorption spectra, what happens is that light is going to be absorbed from certain frequency of light of certain frequency will be absorbed. And that is why you see the dark lines here. This one is the type of spectra that we are going to be dealing for blue and red shift. This type of spectra is the one that we're going to deal in when we go to red and blue shift, right? So there is an explanation what happened and you can see that light of certain frequency from certain colors is absorbed. You can read there for the explanation guys. I recommend you to go to the examination guideline is extremely important for this. This topic will have little marks in the exam still. All right. Now, the emission spectra itself will have two different types. We have two types of emission spectra. And this one is now for photoelectric effect. In photoelectric effect, there is a section that could be asked about emission spectra or spectra in general. All right. That is why it went a little bit better than just the absorption spectra for red and blue. Now, if we go to emission spectra, we have the continuous emission spectra that is produced by solid objects at high uh, temperature and plasma. 
All right, for instance, the rainbow. That here, or the one that happened, that uh, spectra that happened when you let the light pass through a prism. That is what we call continuous emission spectra. You can see all the colors. All the colors can be seen. But now we have a um, line emission spectra. I make a mistake here, guys. Make a mistake here. This one is called line. Let me just write it. And I'm going to take a color that you can see it. Don't you worry. This one is called line emission spectra. Line emission spectra. I'm sorry about that part. Let me just remove it from there so you don't make a mistake. Light emission spectra. Now, in this case that happens when electric current passes through a gas if you have a gas and electric current passes through it what is going to happen that only certain frequency will be shown you will only see lines of certain frequency as you can see there for instance the spectrum for mercury you can see that some frequencies of light is shown the other one is not shown there and then if you see for neon also some light is seen also those lines that is why it's called line emission spectra emission because light is being emitted That's why you can see the colors um, all right so this one is in terms of emission spectra we're going to focus on absorption spectra because it's the one that is going to help us to understand the red shift and the blue shift i i hope i'm not going too fast you can always pause the video and write the notes guys now the let's speak now about something important each star has a specific absorption spectra we are going to be dealing with a uh, absorption spectra. Let me just mark here, so you can see we're dealing with absorption spectrum or spectra. All right. When we compare the absorption spectra of a star that to that of our sun, then we can detect the relative motion of the star. Now, this one is what we use to determine if the star is moving either away from us or is moving towards us. We use the absorption spectra of that specific star compared to the sun that we have on the earth that is what we do it's really simple it's not that uh, difficult so now we're going to red a uh, chef and blue chef we're going to explain real fast and it's not difficult now always we need to have an spectra absorption spectra remember the light of certain frequencies being absorbed that's why you see the dark lines then what you need to know that always you need to have the reference spectra this reference spectra, spectra is the one that we have in the middle in this time this one is at rest spectra at rest at rest on earth for example we assume that we are not moving so we are going to compare the spectra of different stars to the spectra of the same gas done at a, a of the same substance done on the Earth. So we compare that one. That one is how we get to the blue shift and how we get to the red shift. What happened is when you compare the spectrum of the same substance on the Earth and on that specific st um, star the lines these absorption lines are shifted for instance you can see that in the first line all the lines compared to the previous one shifted to the left which in this case correspond to the blue side all the lines move to the blue lines moves to the blue side all the lines move to the blue side. That is what we call blue shift. It's called blue shift because the lines move to the blue side. So far, so simple. It's very simple. If the lines, absorption lines, move to the blue compared to the one on the earth, you must always make sure you identify which one is the rest one. All right. If it moves to the blue, that is what we call blue shift all right so that one is important now if we move back all the way to this point specific the blue have the 
shorter wavelengths, the bigger frequency. So if you remember photoelectric effect, the, if the frequency increases, it means the object, in this case is the source, it means the source is moving towards the listener. So what happened in actual fact is, if the source is moving, the wavelength is compressed at the front of that specific source. If the wavelength is compressed, becomes smaller. As it becomes smaller, the frequency detected by the listener is greater. It means that object is moving towards that uh, observer. The same happens with light. If the shift is moved to the blue side of that absorption spectra, it means that the wavelength is smaller, so the frequency is higher, therefore that specific galaxy or star is moving towards ourselves, which is the um, Earth. So this one here is moving toward. That is moving toward. It's a blue shift. Explanation why? The wavelength detected is smaller, therefore the frequency is higher, and it means that the galaxy is moving towards us. It's really, really, really simple. Now, if the lines are shifted to the red side, as you can see here, you can see here that the lines, all of them, are shifted towards the red side compared to the one that is on the, um, on the Earth. It moves to the red, let's write it here. Lines move to the red end. It means it's red shift. It's red shift. And now the opposite as before. If it's red shift, let's go back to this point here. Red is a longer wavelength. So now, as it, as the source moves away, this one is for Doppler effect, guys. As the source moves away, the wavelength becomes stretched or enlarged. It's like pulling the wavelengths as it moves. It's pulling, pulling. I always remember, like for, for instance, a, a spring. So if you're moving away, you are um, uh, making that distance between the wavelengths longer. As a result, the frequency detected by the source is going to be smaller. So in this case, the frequency is smaller because of the wavelengths become larger and the star is moving away. Moving away. That is all you need to know about blue shift and red shift. So, so far, we learn now the different type of spectra, what is an spectra, which color of light have the longest wavelengths and the shorter wavelengths, as, as a result, higher frequency, smaller frequency, how this one is associated to blue shift and red shift, and something I want to point out. This blue shift and red shift does not mean that the star is red or blue. The color of the star has to do now with the size of the star, how big that star is. Stars could be white, yellow, or red. Now, those colors of the star does not have to do with the blue shift and the red shift. Blue shift, red shift is an absorption spectra done on the Earth compared to that specific star. So, it has to do with the line that is being absorbed moving towards the red or the blue. It does have nothing to do with the size of the star. So it doesn't mean that that specific star now appears to be red or appear to be blue. No, it doesn't work like that. If it's blue or it's red, it means or it has to do with the size of that specific star. But we're not going to deal with that one. It's not important at the moment. Now here is a small explanation of what I said. If the light source is moving away from the observer, then the observer frequency is lower and the observer wavelength is greater. That is red shift. You can stop the video and you can write this one. This one is taken from the examination guideline, guys. If the source is moving toward the observer, negative velocity, the observer frequency is higher and the wavelength is short. I just explained. So I don't have to repeat myself in terms of this one. Now, let's look at one example. This example is extracted from a um, Doppler effect question. Note the following. The fact that it's there, it doesn't mean that this year, you are going to have a question where you have to apply red or blue shift, or even definitions of spectra in photoelectric effect. It doesn't mean that. It means that it could be us. There could be two, four questions related to this one. 
All right. Now, this example says a study of spectral lines obtained from various uh, stars can provide valuable information about the movement of the star. The two diagrams below represent different spectral lines of an element. So, those are spectral lines, is absorption lines, but is more fine. All right. Diagram one represents the spectral of an element in a laboratory on the Earth. So, this one is the reference point. This first one is the reference. Because it's done on Earth. It's done on Earth. It's a reference. So, we compare to that one. So, diagram two represents the spectrum of the same element, of course. You have to compare the same element. If we use hydrogen, it must be hydrogen for us and hydrogen for the star. All right? So they did the spectrum absorption for the hydrogen from the distant star. So now, what happened? What can you observe here? From starting to, from, from reference to the one we are dealing with, you can see that the lines move to the left. All the lines move to the left. What color do we have on the left? No, you cannot see color in the question paper. The question papers are black and white. All right, that is why they write here. So you must also be careful. Check the colors they have on the string. The lines move towards the blue. It means this is a blue chip. So I'm going to write it here. This one show a blue chip. Is the star moving towards or away from the earth? Well, it's moving towards. It is the blue chip. So the star is moving. We can write it down here. Let can write it down here. Star is moving toward. That is the first answer. You'll get one mark for saying toward. Now, um, explain the answer by referring to the shift in the spectral lines in the two diagram. And now we go there. We can see a blue shift. There is, you can write it like that. There is, let me move it a little bit up. There is a blue shift. Now, what does it mean? It means that the wavelength is shorter. Smaller, it is going to be all right. Shorter and the four, the frequency is a bigger. That is the explanation. So the frequency detected by the source, which is us, is bigger than the frequency produced there. All right, I, I hope this one is clear. Guys, this is the video I wanted to make in terms of blue chef and red chef. I hope it helped. I hope really it helped that specific learner that um, asked me for it. Uh, but if it helped, if you think it's helpful, thumb up, subscribe for the channel, and then I'll see you next time. Mr. G, yeah.